Hey guys, Hamster Will here with a new video, and today we're going to talk about the different loot systems that people use in World of Warcraft. Now, loot is obviously a big part of the game, and to try and distribute that fairly and equally, people have come up with several loot systems over the years to try and minimize drama and try and find loopholes to funnel gear to themselves. And in this video, I'll be going over those, give you my thoughts and the pros and cons of these systems. So without further ado, let's get started with the very first loot system I want to talk about, and it's one that is quite controversial. Oh yeah, I figured we might as well start with one of the more interesting ones, and that is Loot Council. So Loot Council is a system where a small team within a guild decides who gets what item. The whole idea behind the system is to make the most fair decisions on who should get a certain item based on performance in the guild. This could mean pretty much anything. Attendance attitude during raiding, how much a player contributes, whether his gear is enchanted, if he brought the appropriate amount of consumables, how much DPS he does in raids, and also what item he is replacing. Now the problem with the system is that the intent is to give items to people who quote unquote deserve it the most. So the intentions are good, but there's this old saying which goes, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. And there's definitely some big problems with the system. First of all, Everyone in the guild should trust the loot council for making decisions fairly and having no personal bias against raid members. Which basically means you're putting your trust into a bunch of strangers you don't know, and that doesn't sound all that attractive. That, and for a loot council to work properly, things like personal bias should not be taken into consideration. But the thing is, we're humans. We will always, to some extent, have a bias towards a certain person, and to completely take that element out of every single member of the Loot Council is very difficult. Another problem is that the Loot Council usually does business behind closed doors, where only the Loot Council can see who votes for who, and when they're discussing who should get the item, usually regular raid members are left in the dark, which means there's also not a whole lot of transparency. And lack of transparency and blind trust means that this system is very sensitive to drama, as some decisions over loot can leave people scratching their head, and because there's not a whole lot of transparency, it can lead to people thinking that the loot was distributed unfairly. So, in a nutshell, this system would be perfect in a perfect world. But more often than not, there's a lot of controversy with guilds that have a loot council system, and a lot of drama when it comes to loot. And there's also some ways to manipulate loot and your odds of getting said item. By the way, please don't do this, but just saying. Let's take Razor Gore in Blackwing Lair as an example. Now this boss drops cloth shoulders called the Mantle of the Blackwing Cabal. And this item is better than both the Mage and Warlock Tier 2 shoulders. Basically, it's a very sought after item. Now let's say I'm a Mage and I currently have the Tier 2 Netherwing shoulders. Now these shoulders aren't too shabby, and one thing Loot Council takes into consideration is how big of an upgrade this item is to you. Now if I would link this, it's obviously not a big upgrade compared to let's say the Magister's Mantle, so I have less chance of getting it. Unless I equip some shitty shoulders before the raid starts, kill Razigor with my guild while wearing those shitty shoulders, and link them once the Loot Council is selecting members for the epic shoulders. And through that manipulative strategy, I just increase my chances. And even though I have my tier 2 shoulders in my bag, no one probably noticed. And since 40 man raiding is a thing in classic, that means so many people to keep track of, which means it's easy to blend in and pull this kind of shit. Yeah, I'm not kidding, I've been in guilds before where I was part of a loot council, and I've seen people do this just to manipulate loot council and try and get an edge over the other guy. How did I know? Well, I recorded most of the boss fights I did, and it was very odd that in those fights I saw said mage wearing tier 2, yet here he was wearing some shitty green item. Very, very suspicious indeed. Oh, and I have one more thing to say about loot council. Thirsty nerds and girls using their female charm to get items do not mix well. Whatever you want to do with that info is up to you. So there you go, that's loot council. A great system on paper with good intentions, but potentially very controversial, sensitive to corruption and manipulation, and if you haven't noticed yet, definitely not my favorite. Alright, and with that long ass monologue out of the way, let's focus on a much more simple system, and that is just using the group loot option. 
Usually with this system, need means you need an item for main spec and greed means you need it for off spec. Very simple and the deciding factor is how high you roll. So if you lose, there's no raid leader or officer to blame as you should just get better at rolling. The problem with the system is of course that everything is distributed super quick and there's no buffer in place to really check if someone actually needs said item for main spec. It's only after someone needs that people can, if they want to, inspect that guy and see what his spec actually is. And in Wrath of the Lich King and up, there's a bit more leeway to this as you're able to trade most items after winning them. Though in Burning Crusade and Vanilla, this is simply not the case. And while people usually spot fairly quickly if someone rolled on an item they didn't need, you can only really take action after the guy already took the item, so it's too late to redeem that mistake. Because of this, the system is mostly used in run-of-the-mill pugs for low entry raids like Molten Core or Zulgaroop. Then we move on to Master Looter, another basic loot system so to say that came with the game. Master Looter allows one guy in the raid to individually link items, see who's rolling on it, and if they want, inspect the people who are rolling on it to make sure they're rolling on an item that they actually need, rather than trying to screw someone over, or the famous auction house spec, where people need on an item just to put it on the auction house, or sell it to a vendor to make a few gold of profit. Yeah, I've seen that scenario happen multiple times, where someone is willing to screw over people just because they're low on gold. And Master Looter definitely prevents that if used properly. Main spec and off spec are usually separated in the system, where the Master Looter will link an item and say MS or OS behind that item to further increase rolling options. And like the previous system, this is usually not that sensitive to drama, as the only factor here is that you need the item for your spec and that you roll higher. While it's a simple but effective system, it sometimes happens that some idiot rolls on the wrong item, the master looter doesn't bother to check if it's the correct item for the person, and then drama happening because of that. If I had a dollar for every time I saw that happen, I'd have $25. Hmm, not bad. Anyway, let's move on to another quote-unquote custom system, which is DKP, which is short for Dragon Killing Points. With this system, everyone in the raid is awarded points for doing set tasks. Most of the time this means killing a certain boss, but it can also be used to give people X amount of DKP every hour, to reward people who stay longer, and also X amount of DKP for people who have the proper consumables active on their character. When an item drops, there is a minimum amount of DKP one has to offer in order to get the item, and who gets the item is based on whoever bids the most DKP. So I actually like the system a lot. Yes, it's kind of simple and maybe not as complex as Loot Council, but at the end of the day, it's just based on a currency. Numbers and nothing else. And these numbers are based on how much time and effort you put in. I know Preach made a joke about Jimmy the No Life coming in and winning everything because he has a shit ton of DKP, which may seem a little demotivating if you're fairly new to the guild, but you know, tough shit. Jimmy the No Life didn't get that DKP for free, he simply put in way more time and effort into raiding than you did. Apart from it being demotivating to newbies, DKP can also cause certain items that could be useful to not get any bids and thus end up being disenchanted. Let's take the Blackwing Cabal shoulders as an example again. Let's say that Blackwing is out and me and two other mages are looking to get that item. We're all saving up our DKP for that one night that it drops. When we're doing Blackwing Lair, we get to the first boss, we kill him, and the item doesn't drop. And we go, ah shit, guess we gotta wait until next week. And then this happens. We all get to Chromagus, and the tier 2 shoulders drop. And while that's an upgrade for all three of us, no one bids. Why? Well, because if one of the three mages bids, he loses DKP, which means he'll have less chance of getting that item compared to the other two mages that did save their DKP by not bidding on it. And because of that, none of the three mages bid on the item, and the item gets disenchanted. Even though it's an upgrade and it means as a raid we would be doing more DPS, where if it was loot council, at least one person will always get an upgrade. This is one problem DKP systems have, so called DKP hoarding. Though, to be fair, most guilds who use the system now, to my knowledge, have a DKP DK system in place. Where, let's say, every month, everyone's DKP will be reduced by 20% to prevent stuff like this from happening. Cause, the more DKP you hoard, the more you'll lose. Then we move on to another custom system, which is probably my favorite. It's very low drama, 
based on sheer numbers, so no buddy-buddy stuff going on, and it also makes sure no one leaves a raid empty-handed for, let's say, two months straight. I'm talking about EPGP. EPGP stands for Effort Points and Gear Points. Basically, it's a balance between points that you obtain for effort and points that you obtain when you get a new item. The reason why this is my favorite system is because 1. It's based on pure numbers. 2. It can be customized to not just give points for showing up, but for also having the proper flasks, showing up early, etc. And 3. The longer you don't get an item, the higher your chances will get of getting an item in the future. So, how does this work? Well, if an item drops, you basically let the master looter know you're interested. This could be through whispering him your current item, or simply rolling. So, whether you roll a 100 or a 1, it doesn't matter. All that matters is that you show you're interested. Then people take a look at the ratio of effort points compared to the gear points. So, if you have 200 effort points and 100 gear points, your ratio is 2.0. Whoever has the highest ratio wins the item. If, however, I obtain two new items during the raid, for let's say 100 gear points each, my total gear points will be 300 instead of 100. And because I stuck around for that raid and I killed some bosses, my effort points increased with 100 to a total of 300. So now I have 300 effort points compared to 300 gear points, which means a ratio of 1.0. This is basically how the EPGP system works. And like I said, the longer you go without an upgrade, the bigger your chances of getting a new item, as your effort points will go up, but your gear points won't, which in return gives you a higher and higher ratio. So there's multiple reasons to like this system. It's based on numbers and a ratio, so no personal bias that comes into play, and it will give people who haven't gotten an upgrade in a while a growing chance of winning the next item drop. So there's also less chance of people whining in raid that they never win anything, or something along those lines. Then last but not least, I'd like to talk about one more loot system, and that is GDKP. GDKP stands for Gold Dragon Killing Points. Which is a little confusing, but simply put, instead of using Dragon Killing Points, you now use Gold to buy items. So here's how it works. When a raid just killed a boss, and the Master Looter goes through the items, he will link the items one by one, but instead of asking for a certain amount of DKP, he will set a minimum bid of let's say 200 gold for an item. It is up to the people to decide how much money they want to spend to get said item. Whoever bids the highest amount of gold wins the item. So yeah, it's basically like a real life auction. And I know what you're thinking. So where does the gold go to? So here's the thing, when you win an item, the master looter trades you the item in return for the amount of gold that you bid and the master looter holds onto that gold till the end of the raid. When the raid is over, he will divide the amount of gold spent on items by the amount of players in the raid, and that average number is what everyone gets when the raid is done. There's a few upsides and downsides to this. The upside is that usually people will get the gold once the raid is done, so if there's someone that decides to be an ass and rage quits the raid halfway through, he now won't get his money. So everyone is basically obliged to stick it through until the raid leader calls it. Which reduces the frustration of everyone in the raid having to deal with people leaving early and trying to find replacements. The other upside is that if the raid you're doing drops good items, and there haven't been any drops for you personally, you won't leave the raid empty handed, as you still get a pretty decent sum of money once the raid is over. Of course, this system has downsides too. Instead of a currency only obtained by killing bosses, meaning your standard DKP points, you're now using the in-game currency, which might result in certain items going for an insane amount of gold. An insane amount of gold that you might feel demotivated to farm. And because gold is the main currency, it's also very sensitive to gold farming bots and gold sellers, as that's usually a quick and easy way to obtain a lot of gold quick for these types of runs. Because of this, the only ones who really use these are pugs for lower level raids. I mean, I can't think of a single hardcore raiding guild that ever used this, and if there was, please correct me in the comment section below. And there you go guys, the different loot systems in WoW. I'm sure there might be a few others out there, but these are the ones that are fairly well known, and I feel like the video has gone on long enough. So, what's your favorite loot system and why? Let me know in the comment section below, and as always, I want to thank you for watching this video. I'm Hamsterwheel, and have a good one.